Tara is in conversation with the CEO and co-founder of e-commerce platform Snapdeal, Kunal Behel. So, your growth story is amazing. How do you do logistics? And that was the first question I remember you asked me. Um, what I'd love to know now, in retrospect, um, what got you even thinking about investing in young startups like ours or others, as well as, um, um, uh, you know, maybe even about our company or our meeting that got you interested? Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for putting me at ease. I'm, I've been as nervous about sitting six inches from you as, <laughs> as you have been. Uh, You know, basically, uh, after I retired, it, it seemed to me that um, there was a whole new world out, out there, which was a digital world driven by a marketplace that was uh, uh, basically had a huge potential driven by handheld devices, which would one day become the virtual uh, retail store of India, and I didn't know your your company or others in the business other than I was struck by the name, uh, and it was a learning experience. It still is a learning experience for me uh, to to learn this new learn of this new world, which is like a virtual world of the business I've been in for 20 years. The, the virtual part is replaced or uh, overshadowed by my impression of the founders and our meeting, when you left my office, I had confirmed in my mind that I would invest in your company. And to that extent, we made it we made a, I made you a promise which I haven't kept, was to come and sit with your people and, and chat. And we haven't done that as yet, but I'm still looking forward to doing it. So it was uh, fortuitous, it could have gone another way. And it was the start of a new journey that I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of. Unfortunately, I don't have billions of dollars, maybe you do, uh, <laughs> to, to invest in. I'm, I'm the less fortunate investor uh, with, with less capital than you have at your disposal, learning how to, how to catch up. Yeah, I, you know, the only difference is this one is not our money, but, <laughs> um, but, but, you, you know, I, I remember when I was, I knew I could answer most of the business oriented questions. The question I was most nervous asking you that day was, can we take a selfie? <laughs> and I remember, I, I think there was, you know, to my dismay, there was like a fraction of a second pause, because I know Mr. Tata has probably asked this question every day, 20 times a day, can I take a selfie with you? And I think he's probably conditioned to take a pause and decide whether he should say yes or no. But he instantly said yes. And I remember that that's probably one of the most memorable photographs I've had since my, uh, in my lifetime. Thank you. I remember I showed it to my mom, and she was like, okay, yeah, you seem to be on the right track now. <laughs> You should let him invest. <laughs> <laughs> same, same applied to my wife. Then she understood why I was not showing up at home for most of the time. <laughs> um, sir, what, when you look at um, entrepreneurs you meet, what are one or two things that you're looking for in them? I'm sure you meet many, you met many throughout your career. 
but at least in these new generation companies which are young often very green what do you what, what are the few i know you don't spend hours with them while making an assessment you make a quick assessment in that quick assessment what are you generally looking for well, first first of all and i say this sincerely even when i was chairman of tatas i was always very uh, intrigued and enthusiastic of interacting with younger people because they're the future of the country and and new startups in fact embody the creativity and the innovation of of young people and and so for me it it was and is a a very worthwhile experience to to interact with them i've i've learned a lot probably more than you believe um, so the thing that that i'm intrigued by first is a startup that has an interesting concept which which excites me if it doesn't excite me i i really don't need to make an investment in in that company the second is what i feel about the founders the and that's just first impressions as such um a founder that that is only in for for the short term is no passion for the sector that he is in or the business he's building doesn't give me a great deal of uh, comfort and lastly i in my small way if i can be of help in supporting or lending my support to a founder who either has an interesting business or who doesn't get funding from others because his business is not a sexy business that the investing public or or investors feel satisfied in i feel that if that founder has the passion and has the innovation he needs to be supported so those are some of the issues in underlying all of that i'm more intuitive than a numbers person and i also recognize that not all investments are going to be positive some may fail and some may have problems for different reasons but that's that's life so um how many people here are entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs <laughs> entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs how how many want mr tata's investment <laughs> i think then you'll need kunal's money because <laughs> i think you're by far probably the most sought after investor in india and i think entrepreneurs like myself and others you have backed and others you have not backed are all benefiting from your blessings for the entrepreneurial ecosystem and we are all very thankful to you for that thank you i'm thankful to you too thank you very much so i'm going to call uh, anand and mr javeri now to just join us and we'll have a uh, little more chat uh, here okay they're right here give them a round of applause please I go first. <laughs> Mr. Tata, two questions. One is, I think that everyone over here would like to understand your perspective of an entrepreneur's value system, which I think today, if you look at, you know, where this country is going and what we need to be doing over the next, you know, ten years, if you don't build the right value systems, you could potentially get lost somewhere down the road. um and the second question to you sir is really a more about a transformational question and that is really that if you you know having run a large corporate conglomerate uh you're seeing a lot of disruption happening globally uh the recent example you know which is in my view quite startling is general motors going and in investing in a car share company called lift 
$500 million, which at some point in time, two, three years ago, one wouldn't have thought possible. So. Yeah, I think any, any business, we go back in history, has had a small number of people in that sector who want to be disruptive, not in a destructive way, but want to move to It, they fight the, the, the new Maverick business that comes in. And so it is in the transformation we're seeing today. You have, you have companies that are heavily invested in brick and mortar or heavily invested in a traditional form of doing business. And the virtual or the digital world is a disruption to them. They would like it to go away. They would like it to fail. They would like it not to succeed. And the fact that it is uh, sort of knocking their feet out from under them makes them bitter and makes them um, aggressive. Whereas, in fact, they ought to see how best they can adapt to the given times. If, if we look at changing times, we tend to uh, respect people who can adapt themselves at that time and others that don't. So you have 60-year-old people who think like 40-year-old and 30-year-olds, and you have 60-year-olds who think like 60-year-olds and defend their turf. We are going through a trans transformation in India. We have almost a billion uh, cell phone owners. Uh, many of them are smartphone owners, and they carry in their pockets a, a virtual retail outlet for goods and services that they need. Is that disruptive? No, it's, it's evolutionary or even revolutionary because it, it addresses a section of the population which could never be addressed with with the connectivity, physical connectivity we have. So my, my attitude is why would we fight it? We, we should see whether we can in, employ the mindset to run a similar business because the opportunity is there. Sir, I have a question, a small rejoinder, then I'll go to Kunal. Uh, you bought Chorus in 2005-06, and, and then you bought Jaguar, right? Uh, you talked about investing just using your intuition. Was it even intuition at that time also, or is it different now uh, when you invest in startups? No, it was not. It was uh, somewhat strategic. Okay. Uh, we were the second largest SUV manufacturer. We, uh, Range Rover was a company that fitted well on top of that. Right. We uh, certainly, I had several meetings with Ford to separate Jaguar from yeah. Land Rover because I didn't know what I would be able to do with uh, right. Jaguar. Right. And finally, there was no choice but to accept yeah. both of them. Got it. As far as Chorus is concerned, uh, at that time, I think we were stuck in in delays in mining licenses right. and various things, and we couldn't grow. Okay. And, and I thought that this would be a way to get an, an international capability okay. to address markets. The thing I didn't know, and I, I think fairly I couldn't be accused of, of being uh, flamboyant about, was I wouldn't know what, that the European economy was yeah. going to collapse. Right, right, right. Nor, nor did many others that should have. 
Sir, what do you enjoy more? What, what did you enjoy the Chorus and Jaguar experience more, or did you enjoy do you enjoy investing in Kunal and uh, Ola Cabs more? One's a straight investment; the other was uh, right. a more involved. Uh, Hmm. Uh, they were also executing, right. right? Okay. So th two different things. Both of them equally enjoyable. Everything oh. good that happens to <coughs> Kunal is very, <laughs> very pleasant for me. Anything that. <laughs> so, that so there is a <laughs> there is a reason Kunal is smiling a lot today. Kunal, congratulations. By the way, yeah. uh, thanks for sharing the moment with us on Twitter. We wouldn't have found out uh, so soon. So, Kunal. I mean, you've been investing a lot, right? In, in, in 2015, especially. Uh, will you will probably have less time now, and, and will you will you see the world differently? More clean tech, more sustainability, or or it'll be the same things. So, for those who are wondering what he's referring to, I posted a photo of our our baby who was born just five days ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> quite excited and sleepless, um, but um, <laughs> I never thought how much sleep I will lose. But <laughs> now I do. Even in <laughs> sorry, no, even investors, <laughs> even investors didn't give this much sleeplessness. <laughs> um, but uh, sorry, to your question, I think um, look for, at least from my perspective, it's more to keep why I do angel investing along with Rohit, my uh, partner. He uh, it's just to keep our thinking fresh. The, the most cutting edge entrepreneurship is being done by the entrepreneurs, yeah. right? And um, we can't start living in a silo or a bubble uh, thinking everything that we are doing is the most cutting edge thing as a company. So we, don't, we have some principles though in what we will invest, what we will not invest. Uh, we mostly, for the most part, invest in marketplaces that are reducing the asymmetry of information between demand and supply. Because India is a country that's been completely ravaged by middlemen uh, over the years. And if you can cut out one, two, three, four middlemen in the middle, our economy benefits, people benefit, sellers benefit. So whether it was Ola Cabs or others, it was all, that was the principle. I think the other is, of course, just, um, uh, you know, I want to keep benchmarking our company versus the new entrepreneurs. Oh, okay. Right? I don't want us to fall behind in terms of talent quality. So, so no, no, I mean, uh, uh, then Paul, I'll, I'll come to you. No, the, the question is, do you sometimes worry that you're now like seven, eight years old, Snapdeal? Right. E-commerce at least is five years old? Yeah, four years, yeah. Four years old, right? Do you think that, you know, four years hence, somebody, will, young startup will come and disrupt you? Do you, do you get that feeling? I think the, uh, we will not be killed by our current competitors. Mm -hmm. If we are going to be killed, it's going to be, we are going to be killed by someone who doesn't exist today. And uh, that actually keeps us uh, very paranoid. Kunal, I think that kind of is a good segue into a point in time where you felt yourself that you may not exist. Tell us about that roller coaster ride. Tell us what happened. And, you know, I think a lot of people out here would kind of want to know, right, if they do get that point in life, how do they move forward? I think if you haven't seen that in the journey of being an entrepreneur, you haven't seen anything. Um, it, it's extremely character building. Uh, it's, of course, stressful when it's happening. But if you stick with it, uh, you stay sincere, and you come out of it, you become a stronger person, stronger organization, and more confident. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter anyways, right? So uh, either way, it's important to stay sincere in those situations. I think one such case, is, the multiple such cases, most with, mostly with entrepreneurs, it's about running out of money, right? Uh, most entrepreneurs face that. So in our case, about two and a half years ago, we were down to $100,000 in the bank, we had to pay a million dollars of salary. Get a loan from our uh, investors, from, from others, we were able to pull it through. Um, but farther back, uh, back in 2009, I remember we were a small company, but we had to pay five lakhs of salaries, and which is more similar to companies in the early stages. We were left with five lakhs, and uh, you know we had to pay five lakhs of salaries, and me and Rohit were left with about five lakhs in our bank account. 
that was a moment of truth for us where we could have walked away or we could have um, or we could have said let's just go all in nothing left um, we decided to do the latter and him and i were left with a total of about 25000 rupees in our bank account so when a vc would call us and say come pitch to us we would say let's do a skype um, and um, you know, sometimes you got to show that confidence and they feel uh they feel that okay these guys must be working on something useful uh, <laughs> and you know there are many such situations there are more operational ones also where you know often times in entrepreneurs run into the problem of people not taking them seriously uh i remember um in our earlier avatar where we were selling coupon books we started as a publishing company we um, <laughs> you know people would not uh, take our calls because we were of course we are hustling and harassing and uh, so the realization would dawn that just don't pick up these guys phones we we would try rohit would try one day then i would try one day third day we would give what is called a standing ovation we would just show up right uh, and those were tough times also when people would not uh, respond because that's also very demotivating one time i remember uh, i don't know why i'm saying this so publicly but i when i moved from the us i got a vonage phone for those who know is a, v, a voice over ip phone where you actually get a us number so you know where this is going um so when one gentleman marketing head of a apparel company did not pick up my phone i actually called him from the vonage phone sitting in kirti nagar office and he picked up the phone instantly uh, so i think there are many such examples and he said come meet me i said i'm in the us uh, but if you'll meet me tomorrow i'll fly back right now uh, so but, but i think there are, so there are many such examples of course where you know heart wrenching uh, denials of from investors or potential partners uh, but you have to just you know you have to steamroll through you just have to keep going at it a little bit of white lies don't matter right in the long journey of it wasn't a lie <laughs> Ratan Tata investor has become the most popular headline in newspapers these days you know it probably less often than sequoia invest in something or matrix invest in something uh, you know what next can we expect from you i mean is this going to be a formal program or will it continue how long and you know i mean like uh, are you going to expand the ambit of what you are doing currently you know i have a, i have a view that one's personal investments should remain their personal investments unfortunately the media seems to make one's personal idea of investing one's funds an an issue of being in the public domain mm -hmm. which is i i think unfortunate but uh, that being what it is uh, i i'd have to say that you don't need to ask me you just need to read it in the media because <laughs> they seem to be more interested in letting everybody know other than myself <laughs> sir are, are you going to increase the the number of startups or you, is there a plan or is this like you know uh, is still be driven by intuition the, there's no plan it's been driven by as as i think i said before you came on the stage and given by uh, one's uh, view of founders uh, a view of the excitement that you get from a sector that somebody is in the level of innovation that strikes you mm -hmm. and if all those things are met one makes an investment because you're very happy and proud to be a part of it and if if it doesn't you you stay out Uh, i think you know you and rohit obviously have built a very successful business and i think a lot of entrepreneurs one of the biggest challenges they face is that do they come in single as a founder do they have a co-founder is there a group of people who get together how do you manage the dynamics how would you kind of look at your journey and then kind of suggest what's the right path and how does one manage that if it's more than one you know i actually don't know of many companies um uh, that was started became very successful in a relatively short, relatively short period of time with a single founder um or it's someone super exceptional right uh, and 
obviously possible but i at least i never had that much faith in my own like i didn't have supernatural faith in my abilities that somehow i can do everything also it's about who do you want to do the journey with right rohit and i were best friends since high school i could never imagine doing anything uh business in business without his partnership um and i think in the early days while we were great friends uh and there's always you know people will caution entrepreneurs don't do go into business with friends or family or whatever doesn't matter if you get along with a person you can tolerate each other through thick and thin it's fine we had we had great personal equation in the early days we had a lot of uh friction around professional decisions uh, with the company but we always talked it out over a period of time what happened was we are both strong will strong minded individuals opinionated as entrepreneurs generally are but even if we go into a room even today with two different opinions when we come out it will be one opinion and it won't matter whose opinion it was and that's what the company will then execute so it's very important uh, uh i think it's very important to have that calibration at all it all stems from mutual respect for your co-founder i don't think there is a smarter person than i than rohit that i have met in my life right and i don't know what he says about me but uh, um, <laughs> but at least i all in all decisions that require tremendous intellectual horsepower i just go to him say rohit can you tell me what we should do and whatever he says we apply our minds mutually and we do it so there's no family war room where you go into and lock up and bash each other up and decide and who's winner no <laughs> no nothing like that mr tata i actually asked the question earlier and maybe just to uh, the value system how do you and what should be the value system entrepreneurs should you know adopt going forward because that seems to be somewhere in this journey of creating wealth and which is not a bad thing but you know how does one kind of keep that compass correct of course values uh, you can only uh, value system or ethical standards you can only determine as you watch somebody go through their working career look at their organization but intuitively you can you can make your judgment you could be wrong but you make your judgment about one's values as to how how they operate their business and uh, one must not confuse uh, ambition and uh, aggression for bad values if they if they're done in with with a value system in in mind but it's something that i think everyone will agree you really find out about a person's values when you have a crisis and earlier you asked about uh what do you do if you are being threatened of being non-existent that's also a crisis and that's a mark of leadership in terms of how you deal with it and it's happened in in the business world you look at a company like apple if you consider it akin to a startup as it was in those days did some very interesting work but was eclipsed the founder was thrown out the company subsequently almost went bankrupt they brought the founder back steve jobs made it the most profitable and the most the certainly the largest company in the world um those are all all marks of the fact that things change and and your ability to lead rather than to follow or to follow in, in a successful company's footsteps or shadow is eclipsed by your your willingness to take the lead to share the risk and to make your company excel in what it does so ethics and values come part and parcel of the same thing Kunal and then maybe a uh, one question and then we should sure yeah. Kunal Kunal Stabdeal has bought 10 companies i believe right so far uh some large some some uh, some like like free charge and some small ones for for uh, technology and team uh, how has that worked out and and should we expect to see more from Stabdeal in the next few years 
I, I don't think we have the best ideas, neither do I think we have all, we have a monopoly on the best people. I feel the best people are going and starting their own companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only way for us to be a, a really good, long-term, sustainable company is to have a good number of really, really high-quality people. And oftentimes that means you have to bring them in with their companies and with their extended teams. And then give them a larger canvas and a larger role so that their entrepreneurial ambitions also come to fruition. So out of our 12 senior team members, actually seven or eight are former entrepreneurs. Former entrepreneurs. Who you acquired. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, um, and not a single one has left our company since we acquired them. Um, <laughs> so you, you have to just, you have to put your hand into what is the motivation for why they started the company. It's to create impact. And if you can provide them a canvas that enables them to create that big impact, then I think the, the, uh, uh, what they can achieve is absolutely mind-blowing. So we've done uh, about 15 deals till now. You know, again, uh, I don't think we have a, we don't have a target that this month we have to do four, right? I, it's very opportunistic. It's very uh, uh, circumstance-driven. Sometimes it's strategy-driven that we feel we have a gap in our portfolio and we have to go find something. Right. Uh, Kunal, just last one question, and just, just a comment. 2015, I think, you're the fastest growing valuation, revenue, even transforming the experience that your consumers get, right? I mean, you, you, are, you, you are from becoming a follower, you're like the leader in, in everything, every, every aspect of consumer experience, numbers, fundraise and all. Now, was, was Mr. Tata the good luck charm? Uh, that happened? Is there a doubt? <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm not, I'm actually not, not kidding at all. Um, so you're talking about good luck, good luck charm. Mr. Tata's investment happened last August, I think, give or take. 95% um, of the capital we raised as a company, we raised after that. I think much, much more than a good luck charm. We'll take some questions now. Um. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just a second. Over here. All right. Here you go. This gentleman here. What's your name, my friend? Rajan. My name is Rajan. Uh, my question uh, to Mr. Bal is, do you get the regular advices and mentoring from Mr. Tata? You know, um, I don't want to monopolize Mr. Tata's time because he's also very busy. But, um, you know, oftentimes we actually end up meeting more at such occasions. Uh, <laughs> and I make sure that when I meet him, I, I take, you know, oftentimes you have to be in the company of greatness to absorb some of it. And I think that's what happens with Mr. Tata. Um, you know, I, you guys should actually, anyhow, I mean, before I met him, just to acclimatize myself to meeting him in person, I watched every YouTube video of his. And, you know, just to reduce the nervousness. Um, you know, that's how I prepared. And, uh, and it's just, you know, his uh, way, of, his style, as you saw today, very simple. There's nothing complex about what he's saying, but it all makes a lot of sense. And oftentimes, as entrepreneurs, we tend to, you know, turn ourselves into a pretzel with our convoluted logic. Oftentimes, life is much simpler than that, and as are uh, the solutions to problems. All right.